During the Second World War, particularly in the 1940s, the US Navy was developing a technique to explore the depths of the sea, and they found something strange but completely fascinating. It was a thick floor about 300 meters under the sea's surface. That's about 3,388 meters above the actual bottom of the ocean. They ran numerous tests on their equipment, the sonar, but the results remained the same. But soon after, the technicians realized something marveling about this floor. It could move. The 300-meter floor below the sea's ocean moved up at night and slowly receded downwards during the day. Was the sea drying down? Or was the Earth growing? This fantastic discovery sparked different questions in the aqua science world. Well, what was down there was nothing really serious. Just over a million fishes and other marine animals that formed a thick facade floor in between the sea's surface and the bottom of the ocean. That is the deep scattering layer we know today. Before we go on, a big welcome to all of our viewers on the other side of the screen. Today, we'll examine the mystery of the deep scattering layer and what scientists know about this possible alternate universe. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't to become part of the family. Let's move on. The deep scattering layer, also known as the sound scattering layer or the phantom bottom, is a vast concentration of marine organisms suspended in the water column. This water column is ample space between the ocean's depths and the top. It was initially known as the ECR layer, named after its three founding fathers, C.F. Earing, R.J. Christensen, and R.W. Ray. They used the sonar technique to evaluate the sound reflective attribute of the DSL to identify its presence in the water. It's about time you start to ask, what is the sonar? And how is it crucial in discovering the life floor? The acronym stands for Sound Navigation and Ranging. Sonar was a system initially developed in the 1930s. It makes use of sound waves in the form of pings to explore the ocean. The military and technicians basically used it to create nautical charts, locate underwater hazards for navigation, search for and identify objects in the water column and on the seafloor, such as shipwrecks, and map the seafloor itself. Rather than light rays, these scientists made use of sound waves as they could go further than light in water. Here's how the sonar located bases in the water. The system has physical sensors called transducers. These transducers would send down sound pings into the water. And when they touched a surface, it would send these waves back to the sensors. Physicists used the time taken to receive the receptions to estimate how deep the ocean was. The sonar was not only valuable to the scientists. Even the predator animals make use of this technology to capture their prey. When the sound waves go down, they hit all obstructions, including the fish's next meal. Whales and dolphins trace the sound waves to smaller fishes and marine animals that they unfortunately hit. When C.F. Earing and friends sent these sound pings, they received them back faster than expected. It was giving them an estimated distance of 300 to 500 meters, which was too shallow for the ocean. The seamen first believed the deep scattering layer was an illusion because of the long time they'd spent in the ocean. It was later conceived as a sunken island, hence bringing about the name Phantom Zone. But what continued to lead these men doubting was the movements of this body. For it to be able to move clearly means it had life. The theory behind the movement of the DSL is known as diel vertical migration. At night, the technicians exploring the ocean noticed the rise of the in-between floor, and it receded when the sun rose. This was because most of the marine creatures in the DSL were diel vertical migrants and used this means for survival. Diel is derived from the Latin word dies, which can be translated to day. It's a situation whereby organisms move up at night and return to the seabed during the day. The discovery of this animal migration can be affiliated with French naturalist Georges Cuvier in the early 1880s. During the migration, billions of animals, mostly zooplankton, which includes smallish animals, including fish, various shrimps, and jellies, move up to the sea surface and back down at dawn, within the time frame of about six to eight hours. That is a lot of movement in such a short time. Nighttime is the period of replenishment for these creatures. The planktivorous fishes move up at night to eat the photosynthetic planktons that stay near the surface to absorb solar energy. Phytoplankton are microscopic organisms that use energy from sunlight and carbon dioxide to produce food. And when the day begins to set in, these creatures go back to the ocean's depth to hide from predators that use light to hunt them. For example, you and I. 
They also go down to avoid ultraviolet sun damage to their DNA and use the colder regions to reproduce and grow bigger. The deep scattering layer houses about 65% of the total ocean life. Most of these creatures are mesopelagic and their swim bladders reflect the sonar sound waves that are sent into the ocean. That's how this fish world was able to be detected. It's a region of high pressure and little to no light, being the reason for the evolution of the creatures there. There are a lot of fascinating creatures down there, like the glowing lanternfish. Scientists have inferred that these unique abilities result from the need for survival. Some of these fishes are transparent to camouflage themselves from predators more easily. Fishes like the lanternfish have glowing bodies to ward off predators and attract small plankton prey. The deep scattering layer plays a very vital role in humanity, but only a few people know its importance. It makes up about 65% of aquatic life. Aside from the tiny fish, you can also find more enormous marine creatures like whales, dolphins, octopuses, and many others. Also, the creatures of the deep scattering layer release substances called snow feed. This snow feed is the primary source of consumption for the animals at the seabed. During the upper diel vertical migration at night, the planktivorous fishes allow the reproduction of the phytoplankton to avoid their extinction. The phantom zone is significant to the regulation of climate change, with the suppression of carbon dioxide to the bottom of the ocean. You see, when these fishes eat the phytoplankton, they go back to the water and excrete carbon dioxide, which is settled down to the abyss and not released until millions of years after. This helps to prevent climate disasters like global warming and the depletion of the ozone layer. For us humans, the deep scattering layer is a major source of fish for consumption and research purposes. However, when we misuse this gem, we endanger the phantom zone, which comes with many downsides. Humans are well known for misusing nature, hence causing extinction. We fell trees, leave plastics unrecycled, and aren't mindful of population multiplication. It's the same situation with the deep scattering layer, which is in grave danger because of the uncontrolled fishing activities carried out there. Unlike the shores, DSLs can be found on international seas, which have very few laws restricting fishing activities. Therefore, most anglers have seen this place as a golden fish mine and indiscriminately extract fish and other marine creatures for commercial purposes. Some of these countries have even turned these points into their national reserve for fish harvesting. If the deep scattering layer is absent, there will be nothing to suppress the carbon dioxide to the abyss, releasing many toxic greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. The deep scattering layer is a very important part of nature and must be guarded preciously by world leaders. The phantom zone is as crucial as a roof over your head. We've come to the end of our video today. If you found it informative, be sure to share it with your friends. Remember to leave a like and subscribe. Hit that tiny bell button to receive an alert whenever we make videos like this. See you next time.